This is Dr. David W. Kim. Tonight's video blog is about Asian blepharoplasty, which is the common name of the procedure that's used to create a crease in the upper eyelid, usually of the Asian individual. Uh, this is also sometimes known as double fold surgery. This is a very common operation that I perform, um, but conceptually it's a little bit complicated for someone not acquainted with the anatomy of the eyelid. So I created this video blog to familiarize folks interested in this operation. The first thing to remember is that the eyelid anatomy is somewhat complicated and varied even among Asian patients. If you read the literature, it says anywhere from 20 to 50 percent of Asians either have an underdeveloped crease uh, or no crease at all. So this individual at the top has no crease and therefore has a single fold. This patient in the middle has an underdeveloped low crease crease, therefore the fold is very low and close to the eyelash margin. Um, and in this individual, which happens to be me, does have a well-formed crease uh, in a normal position and uh, therefore a higher fold. When we looked at the anatomy of the eyelid, we looked at the layers beneath the skin. The first layer we see is the orbicularis muscle, which is the muscle that is important to allow us to close our eyes. Beneath that, we have a couple of fascial layers. We have the orbital septum, and very importantly, we have this levator alponeurosis. This is a continuation of the levator muscle, and this muscle is important because this is what allows us to open our eyes. When we look at the levator alponeurosis in its deeper plane, it's attached to the tarsus, which is the fibrous portion of the eyelid that gives substance to the eyelid. So the levator attachment to the tarsus is what allows us to open our eyes. When you look at the side view of the anatomy, the levator muscle, which is shown in this red, typically goes down and not only connects to the tarsus, but sends some fibers to the skin. The location in which the levator muscle is attached to the skin signifies where the crease is formed in most humans in the, in the world. And only in a relatively minority of Asian patients is this connection lacking, as shown in this picture. And in this situation, the levator muscle still maintains its function to attach to the tarsus and allow the eyelid to open, but because it's lacking a connection to the skin, there is no apparent crease and therefore only a single fold. When we perform surgery, I typically make an incision at the exact position of the desired crease. That allows me to place some very precise strategic sutures between the lower aspect of the incision to the actual levator muscle. These stitches eventually dissolve but scar tissue is formed between these structures, restoring the normal anatomy in that area. In some cases, surgeons will use a different technique where they flip the eyelid and evert it and just place some sutures that weave back and forth in a baseball style manner, avoiding an incision. Now, this is tempting for some surgeons because it, is a, it can be done more rapidly um, with uh, less downtime. However, I found that this technique does not lead to uniformly precise results, and more importantly, the results sometimes go away over time, so I prefer this open method. This is a patient who had such an operation preoperatively. You can see that he has no crease, therefore a single fold. Uh, this is him uh, less than a week after surgery, so he still has a little bit of bruising, and because the swelling hasn't settled, the fold is at a higher position than where it will eventually settle. This is about three weeks after surgery, so he still hasn't quite completely settled, but this is approaching his final result. In summary, Asian blepharoplasty or upper lid crease formation is an intriguing and very satisfying operation. Uh, it demands an intimate knowledge of the complicated anatomy in the upper eyelid. Uh, it's a fairly simple technical procedure, but it's one that requires a very meticulous approach. This is an operation I quite enjoy doing. Uh, my patients have had great results. They're very happy with the outcomes. Um, and it's something that uh, I've learned and developed the nuances over time. Um, if you have any questions about this operation, you can contact my office uh, at the email, which will follow shortly.